Ladies and gentlemen, the 5 GHz dream is alive, I tell you. For the Zen 3 processors anyway. More specifically, the Ryzen 5000 series has not had some type of special edition processor released by AMD. Instead, this is a function of CTR, or Clock Tuner for Ryzen, which is receiving a 2.1 update. This brings with it a plethora of changes. You can see in the first slide, the uh, Clock Tuner for Ryzen is receiving a Profile PX, which is being dubbed the best solution for games, benchmarks, and workloads. Stable, fixed, effective frequency, which is not affected by limits, no EDC throttling, temperature throttling, or stretching. They recommend the voltage is 25 millivolts lower than the standard voltage, and it's safe and easy to set up. In the following slide, they also mention that CTR will automatically find the best cores for the PX profile during the diagnostics for the 5900 and 5600X, that's four core maximum, whereas the 5950X and the 5800X, it's six, and for two, there's two temporary maximum. There's no increase in diagnostic time and you will see the results on the profiles page. Basically, this is all taken care of relatively automatically for you. So you're going to get the best performance. Well, not exactly with much effort on your part. I will, of course, make the usual claim and caveat that it's going to be dependent on your processor. So not all CPUs, of course, are created equally. And you may get that golden sample, which, you know, clocks way past 5 gigahertz with basically no voltage at all and puts out absolutely no heat. Of course, I'm being a little silly, but you might also be really unlucky and just get a processor which essentially refuses to overclock at all. Um, but either way, this is a really cool update. I will link Yuri's Twitter in the video description alongside the announcement video and I look forward to when it is released. Unfortunately, there's no exact release date as of the time that I'm recording this. Only the trademark soon. And no, I'm not quite sure why I said it like that. Speaking of Silicon Lottery, I want to quickly make a mention of an interesting tweet which was put out by PowerGPU as they claim that Ryzen 5000 series has a high failure rate. It's worth noting that the tweet itself has now been removed with no explanation as to why it's been removed. So whether their information was incorrect, whether they've been facing pressure of some description, I honestly don't know. And frankly, speculating won't really help. But you can see yourself that the 5950X times 50 units, there were eight DOA. And the 5600X, there was 120 units and they received three DOA. And according to their experiences anyway, they've had one dead Intel CPU, which was a 9700K. So from what I can gather based on the tweet, which has again been deleted, it seems that this was their own processors, which they were kind of testing internally for like their builds and shipping out to customers in pre-built systems and not uh, processors which had been sent, you know, in, in a retail packaging to a customer and then the customer had returned them. I may be incorrect on that point and it's quite difficult to tell because again, the tweet thread has been nuked, but that's what the gist I can make of it. As for the failure rates, I mean, generally when a product is released, you kind of expect, especially early on, a two, 3% failure rate. Again, it does depend upon the product and the complexity of it. So that's why, for example, the 5950X has more DOA than the 5600X because obviously it's a more complicated part given the fact it's got more CPU cores and stuff. But yeah, I mean, eight out of 50 would be kind of high, at least to my knowledge. But unfortunately, there's not exactly a large sample size here. I mean, yeah, that this is their experiences and it's not too great, but you can argue that it could have been a bad batch that they've received or a bad couple of batches. Maybe for all you know, the you know UPS guy or whomever has like decided, eh, you know what, I actually just want to drop kick this box. Just screw this box in particular. I'm going to drop kick it. Like you don't know why or how a specific batch was damaged or had failure like there's so many different explanations and in my personal opinion there's not a wide enough sample size here to really know this is not me saying that their experiences don't matter and i'm not calling them out i'm just saying that i am i find it very iffy to kind of uh, criticize on such a small sample size it 
is definitely higher than I would expect, but it's also not, say, 10,000 processors or 20,000 5950Xs with a, a failure rate, which would be relative to that. If we kind of had those numbers, then we would know more. But yeah, again, it's way too difficult to know. I'd also like to discuss the PlayStation 5 die shot, which has been photographed by Mr. Fritz. I'll link his tweets along with the accompanying photos in the video description. Now, I have to say that uh, I'm going to go over this fairly quickly and may go more in depth into this in the next couple of days. As regular viewers know, I haven't been feeling 100% uh, the last week or so, honestly. I'm still recovering. So I was going to do a more in-depth explanation or video on this, but... Uh, just because of the sheer number of people that have wrote to me, I figured I'd just cover it in brief today. Um, the main focus I'm working on at the moment, honestly, is like a whole thing on mesh shaders. So that's like the next big project on the channel. And then I'm probably going to get on to uh, the PS5 SOC because obviously DirectX 12 Ultimate now has like a test for 3D Mark. And there's also a couple of other very interesting things that have emerged on mesh shaders for the Xbox and PC, so that's like the next big project. So maybe I'll cover the PS5 die further in the not too distant future. But honestly, Sony have been really cagey regarding the PlayStation 5, and I've mentioned several times of why I've been hearing that they've been doing that. Basically, to my knowledge anyway, they just wanted to make the focus about the games, and a lot of it apparently stemmed from the frankly terrible reception for the Road to PS5 event, which, honestly, I don't really blame people for receiving their Road to PS5 event poorly. I don't... I think that there was a ton of info there, but I don't think that the event was handled particularly well. I think that it was perhaps a little overcomplicated for most people, but it wasn't also in-depth enough for those technically minded. That's my opinion on that, and I'm sure others would disagree or agree. However... As I mentioned, there is a die shot which has actually been released, and this I'm sure will be probably rendered uh, obsolete in the next year or so. I'm assuming that we're going to very quickly this year learn more from games developers and stuff will start to leak now that the console's in the wild. You know, these things generally do. Um, maybe, uh, you know, after GDC or something like that, things will become more readily apparent. That's just a guess. I'm not saying that as a leak, but I wouldn't be surprised if we start to actually see some of this stuff more readily explained by games developers or perhaps even Sony officially. Although, honestly, I don't think Sony at this point are going to really comment on this stuff. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully I am wrong. Either way, yeah, the die shot. There is also an annotation of this which has been put out by uh, Lacosa. Hopefully I've pronounced that correctly. Uh, but basically they've done a pretty decent job of kind of uh, doing their best anyway to label this stuff. Now it's worth noting that at the end of the day, even with this die shot, unfortunately we are missing a ton of insight into the die itself. We don't have exact numbers, for example, on the size of the cache. We can do a semi-decent job in guessing, um, and we'll get more into specifics in just a moment, but we don't know, for example, what some of the functions on some of the hardware actually are, um, like feature sets and so on. None of it is exactly confirmed, unfortunately, by the die shot. So anyway, that's just my personal opinion. But Top and bottom of this image, you can indeed see the GDDR6 uh, memory interfaces. Again, that makes sense. There is also in the middle, the by far the largest portion of the die, the, the bit with the GPU. Obviously, the GPU has been easily one of the more controversial aspects of the PlayStation 5. And here we can see the work group units, or WGP. These are basically dual compute units, so each of them houses, well to uh to cu so that's in total 36 compute units there's technically 40 present however four of them are disabled for die uh, for a uh, yield purposes excuse me the xbox series x is identical with that respect there's 56 technically present on the die but sony and microsoft wisely have a few left over so for the xbox 56 are present however four are disabled leaving 52 and there is also the TMU with ray tracing accelerators, which are slightly below the first uh, group of work 
group. That was a terrible sentence. And also above the um, lower work group. And you can see that on both sides. So these are the texture mapping units with ray tracing accelerators because obviously the TMU on RDNA2 basically handles both uh, BVH acceleration as well as, um, well, texture mapping. In the, pro in the center of it is the command processor and geometry engine, which is Sony's little uh, bundle of joy, which obviously handles the uh, geometry processing, as the name would imply, on the GPU. It is very, very much customizable in terms of how it works. And yeah, other than that, there's a whole bunch of caches. And on the left side appears to be the CPU clusters. As we've known for some time, the PlayStation 5 has eight cores, 16 threads, thanks to a Zen 2-ish class processor. Um, and yeah, that's exactly the same, of course, as the Xbox Series X. Interestingly, from what we can gather from the uh, image, it seems that there is actually a little change though for the PlayStation 5 chip. So the change appears to be that the fixed function unit FFU, as well as Fuse Multiply Add FMA, FMA DD are actually removed for the PlayStation 5. And they are of course present, um, to our knowledge anyway, on both the Xbox series of systems, as well as Zen 2 for the desktop. So the changes to the FFU, may cause some people to raise an eyebrow and actually be a little concerned. However, when you think about it logically, the changes here are actually, well, pretty in line with what you would expect for a console. Basically, heavy AVX instructions are not exactly a great thing for games. They don't really get used that often, although it does, of course, depend upon the game title itself, but it's also responsible for putting out a ton of heat and consuming a lot of power, which would be not what Sony would ideally want to do for the PlayStation 5. Ultimately, yeah, in my personal opinion, this uh, die shot just, to me anyway, it just raises even more questions than what I had previously. But um, I think that's just about all I want to kind of discuss on this today, because again, um, I'm still kind of getting over being absolutely plagued. So uh, my brain isn't necessarily doing the thing that brains should do at the moment. There is one last thing I really want to discuss though, and it's actually incredibly important, at least in my opinion, and it is a DLSS plugin for the Unreal Engine. <laughs> Before everyone gets excited, this is not uh, really going to benefit us as pure gamers, but for games developers, this could be incredibly important. In fact, I would even go as far as to say that this could be one of the most important pieces of software that NVIDIA have actually created in the last several years. DLSS obviously is deep learning super sampling where you're taking a lower resolution image, for example, 1080p or 1440p, and then upsampling it to a higher resolution. And I have to say that the first implementation of DLSS, DLSS 1, eh, it was okay, like, the best you can say is that it definitely improved performance, but the image quality, especially on certain games, wasn't that great at all. Um, it was kind of acceptable, but honestly, there wasn't that much of a difference from just lowering the resolution in many cases, because it was kind of six to one, half a dozen of the other. But DLSS 2 is a very different animal, and the image quality is really good now. So obviously with DLSS, it utilizes NVIDIA's tensor cores to accelerate AI calculations to upsample. And what this basically is, is a plugin to easily allow developers to utilize deep learning super sampling easily in their game engine. So you can even run um, lower resolutions and then upsample to 8K, and it's compatible with UE 4.26. So this is actually a mainline UE4 plugin, so you can easily just grab it and then obviously you're pretty much just good to go. I think that this is going to be really awesome as games actually use it more and more frequently. And this also, of course, matches what I was discussing recently with one of my uh, sources when I was talking about the performance of NVIDIA's Lovelace versus RDNA 3 for the desktop and also Intel's XE GPU. Uh, if you missed that video, I'll link it in the video description. However, long story short, 
the um, RDNA 3 architecture as well as Intel XC are going to be really good at ray tracing. I'm still thinking NVIDIA will have the edge with Lovelace compared to its competitors, but it's not going to be like RDNA 2 where you can definitely see the difference compared to uh, RTX 30. But what NVIDIA do have as like their, I don't know, feather in their cap, so to speak, is the LSS. And despite the fact that Fidelity FX Super Resolution is going to be a thing, from what I understand, NVIDIA's DLSS technology is still going to be superior, at least in the kind of short to medium term. So it's going to be really interesting to see how NVIDIA continues to push this with game engines. Clearly, Unreal Engine is incredibly uh, popular in, with games developers. Capcom use Unreal Engine, Microsoft use Unreal Engine, and so on and so on. But yeah, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we're also going to start seeing this pop up for other popular game engines as well, such as Unity. With that said though, thank you very much for checking out the video. The normal stuff, if you have enjoyed it, like, share, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.